chilling grill number two. It's a lot nicer out. And there's actually daylight. What is up, my dudes? Right, move some stuff out of the way. I don't have a proper... I don't have a proper cover yet. Repping, repping the Dev Mountain today. I'm gonna go get the burgers. BRB. No viewers. What up? I'm gonna get a jacket before it gets too cold. People keep joining, and then they leave. That's not enough. Helicopter's going. How's everyone going? How's everyone's night going? How's everyone going? What? So as you can see, we got the burgers. I should probably move this. I'm just looking at my, uh, I'm just looking at my laptop. We got two people. I was learning Python before this. Some automate the boring stuff with Python. <laughs> the thumbnail. High quality meme.
What are you guys up to? Wednesday night, hump day. Got them sriracha burgers and garlic burgers. This thing heats up in like two seconds. <laughs> Not used to that. Maybe I should like turn this. A little bit. I don't have one of those steel brushes yet. I'm a noob and I don't know how to grill. To go get a spatula. Messed up. All right, five people still here watching an, uh, a grill. That's amazing. So as you can see, we've got the, hold on. What up, Justin? We got the, uh, we got the sriracha burgers on the top, 85.15 for those protein connoisseurs, I guess. <laughs> and then underneath, but I, I think I made it much in reality, but whatever. I can't see chat. Smells good. Smells like a summer day to me. What are you guys doing? Justin, are, are you in Pacific time? Or what? Oh, you're Eastern. So is it like 10 p.m. for you, dude? You gotta go sleep. Actually, if you work in a school system, you, get, you probably get a lot of days off, so it's probably not that bad. I don't even have any buns. So this is the part where this chilling grill was not accurately planned, but I don't need carbs because I had too much carbs today, so. It is what it is. What are you up to? What are you guys doing? Seems we got a... PayPal, congratulations, you've been selected. I've been selected like every day. They send me that same email. I'm not gonna Odin Project CSS today. Oh, nice. My job responsibilities just got like cut in half because the guy is like, he doesn't want me treading on his territory. You want a burger? Yeah, bro. What you want? Do you want, do you want the sriracha? Or we have the garlic burgers coming up here. Let me give, let me give this. That's probably a better view, but I don't know how to mount this up here. All right, Sriracha Burger extra spicy coming up. I mean, it's kind of nice, but, but, but because like before, like, so like <laughs> there's this careful balance, right? Because I'm streaming and this video gets recorded and I can't, I can't like talk sh shit about my job. Obviously. Um, yeah, see, I don't have any buns to toast. Um, but my job's not even bad, so that's the thing, right? But every job has its stuff. 
And it, it was just getting to the point where it was like, there was like nine different projects, everyone's answers all at the same time. And everyone's like, why isn't this getting done? Why isn't this getting done? So they tried to, they made me, like I was like the pseudo team lead. And then they made me like the official lead. And then that wasn't working because whatever reason, I mean, it probably sounds bad, like I'm not a good like lead in a, like a leadership position, but like you can't make people do their job, right? So they made my boss like the project manager and then, and then that didn't work. And then everyone, and, the, <laughs> and they were like, you're doing too much stuff. Cause like my job, okay, so my job actual like details is like, I'm, I'm, I'm like the front end guy. So I do, I, boss hands me the design. I make the HTML and the SAS and whatever JavaScript is needed to do what it does. Yeah, I know. So I make the, uh, the JavaScript. Usually JavaScript's not that complicated. It's usually just like jQuery type stuff, but the complicated stuff was in was in the .NET, was in the C# -sharp stuff, and um, so I would give my code to the to the .NET guy, and he would he would do his best to do it, and then he'd be like, I don't, he's not front end, and I'd have to help him, I'd have to help him with like the C# -sharp implementation because in C# -sharp, there's these things called ASPX files, which are just HTML, and like you can do inline CSS, which is not amazing, but there's these ASPX files, and then there's like these C# files where you generate code from C# so you would be like writer dot write, and then you put in a block of HTML in in parentheses, and so then you have to do all these escape characters if you like want to do inline styling because there was a for there's a uh, was I angry? Maybe I'm just venting, I guess. It's kind of like building up. What I'm saying is like. Now that they like have my job responsibilities, it's so good. I can do like mobile testing. I can do the animations and stuff they want. As we have like a little avatar now. Um, what else can I do? Oh, I do videos. So they're making like, who is this company videos type deal and I have to film and edit. So that'd be fun. And then I get to do my front end. Oh, it's not like, it's not like I don't have enough work to do. It's like I had too much work to do. The doggos? Uh, apparently they're rolling in the dirt. At least this one is. They're sniffing something on the ground. I don't know. Hey, what are you rolling in over there? Bro! What are you rolling in? You wanna say hello? Can you sit? Sit. Good boy. Can you shake? He knows like one trick. Can you shake? Shake! No, no, no. Sit. Get out of the way. They, they started to get jealous. Oh, my finger. Uh, tonight it's actually really not like windy or anything, so it's... Let me... I had to, I had to hold the camera. Come here, dude. Bruh. Come here. Come here. Sit. 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 Shake. Come on. Shake. Good boy. Can you do both? Come on. Come on. Okay. Up. Come on. Come on. He's on. Do it. That's like the only trick he knows. The other one doesn't know, doesn't know any tricks at all. I gotta flip these burgers real quick. Uh, it's actually a really nice night out. I'm excited I get to do that whole work remote because I got a bunch of stuff to do on my home PC tomorrow. So apparently the trick to a good burger is to not it's to resist the urge of like squishing them. All right, Crusader Rabbits, can you please, can you please explain your avatar? I look at it and I wonder what it is, and I'm just really curious because when I when I enlarge it, it looks like an Asian girl in a diaper. Can you just explain it. I'm really, I'm just perplexed. No, they don't get any burgers. I just read the chat over here on my laptop.
So I guess we're doing it protein style, just straight up, straight up beef. I should probably get a plate. Oh, you're Weeboo and she's your waifu. Makes sense. Things check out. Ah, I had a feeling it was gonna buzz. You ever had those feelings? Keenan, what up? Hi, pups. I don't know what I'm gonna eat them with. Have you, have I heard about Mr. No. I don't know what that is. Is it here? A restaurant chain called Mr. It's? Yeah, no. I have no idea. What, what is it? Yeah, I've been married before. I got married when I was, uh... Oh, Mr. T's. <laughs> um, I got married when I was 20 years old. And then I got divorced when I was... 25. And now I am 27. I pity tofu! <laughs> I'm sure that's like the most ordered. So now, now I'm playing that single game with the, well, I guess I have a girlfriend, but I've had a girlfriend for a while. I suppose you could say that's probably more accurate. But she doesn't like to be, we're very, me, me and my girlfriend are very polar, we're very polar opposites. She doesn't want to be on stream, she doesn't want to, she doesn't have an Instagram, she doesn't have a Facebook, she doesn't like to be in any of my pictures. Uh, we're very opposite. She just wants like, so my goal is to like, be somehow independent or, uh, you know, do just do something for my, for myself to help other people, like not do the typical thing. Um, unpaid overtime, yeah, I work all the time. And she just wants like the nine to five, you know, two week vacation until she's 65 and whatever. Yeah, so I work all day long. I get emails, messages all day long. Like I was at the gym and my CEO messaged me. He's like, yo, what up? How you doing? And I work all the time. I just have like a, I have a pretty flexible schedule anyway. So usually it's five to one. And then after that, it's whenever. I don't mind because they let me work remote. That's all I really want. And since I'm so used to working remote, they'll let me, um, you know, I, I, it's hard to have like that divide, that work-life balance when you're working remote. Um, you know, so this is America, and uh, if you do, if you do, if you just do your 40, you're kind of a slacker. So uh, I work all the time because I choose to work. Because I know if I stop working, some other guy out there is working harder than I am for every moment that I'm not. And maybe, hold on, I gotta get a plate. I'm gonna burn these burgers. water. I think these might be like well done. Come on bro, get on the spatula. Really? Alright, next. What was the questions? Alright, so do I have time for myself? Um, not really. But there's this phrase I saw, actually, uh, I don't know if you guys know who Tim Ferriss is. He writes like Tools of the Titans, uh, The 4-Hour Work Week. You probably heard of that book. That book's pretty interesting. So he hired dudes in India 
to do his job and he only worked four hours a week to manage those dudes in India to do his job. Then he got caught and he got fired. He made his own business. Um, so it's all about like productivity and stuff. Um, yeah, so there's this thing in a book called, uh, it was, what was it? Oh, it's called Tribe of Mentors. Um, I don't know if that was the one. Tools of Titans, Tribe of Mentors. What are those books? And it was like, you have to CTFO before you BTFO, right? So, so chill them out before you burn them out, you know? You know what I'm saying? So sometimes I try to do that. When I wake up in the morning, I'll usually do some like five, 10 minutes meditation. That sounds so like new age, like hipster, right? But it just like, the whole goal of it is to not think, because if I wake up and just start going, then I start thinking about like, let me, let me tilt this up a little bit. If I wake up and just start going, then I start, I don't know. If I wake up and I look at my phone, my brain is already like on. Do I have any kids? No. When I was married, the wife, uh, she didn't want kids. I didn't want kids. Uh, so like, you can't lick the spatula, silly. Uh, Yeah, no, so she had a thing where if we were to, there's like a 50%, let's see. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I, I, I don't spend 80 hours a week programming. Like, programming is, is cool and it like pays the bills and stuff, but it's not, like I'm not like in love with it. I mean, I kind of am, but like I really love all the auxiliary stuff that goes along with it. Like the learning and like testing out new concepts and all that stuff. I really like film, like editing videos, like cool transitions and like movie shots. I, I don't know, but that, that doesn't pay the bills. So programming does. Um, and I can kind of do that with this. I had this cool idea that if I learned Python, I could automate drones and like plan out like this little, like I just want to test it. So like I had this little drone and it'll like take off if you like cross this Arduino sensor or something. And it'll like take off in my backyard and like go fly over you if there's like people creeping. I don't plan on working like eight hours a week for the rest of my life. I'd rather just do it now while I have time. I don't really want kids. Not really. When the, um, what up, pup? Yeah, I just do it. <laughs> do you see this? Suvi, can you jump? Jump! Suvi, sit. Sit. Jump. Jump. I don't know if you can see her. She's just waiting. Just waiting for that spatula. So it's like... Do I like Ruby? Not really. I teach it. I teach it on my, uh... On my teaching job, but... It's not my favorite. I don't really like... I don't like how they do objects and stuff. It's very, uh, so the first of all, there's Ruby, and then like the only framework you can get for it is Sinatra or Ruby on Rails. I won't work at a large company for that reason. Like companies like Google and stuff, they're great to have on your resume. They sound really nice, but <laughs> they, they, they like, they provide you breakfast they provide you lunch they provide you dinner they provide you like activities and stuff to do because they don't want you to leave they want you to work 90 hours a week and like sorry dude I like to go outside and like see these mountains over here that's why I live in Utah and like hike and like see nature and travel but like if you work at a company like that they're like well, why, why would you ever need to leave we provide everything for you and then you just become a code monkey and that's why like it's cool to have on your resume because they have this high expectations of you when you're a developer but like Work life? No thank you. I know, right? Uh, 
I like so the whole motto like since I lived in Finland especially because I lived in Finland for so long I'm so used to like companies in Finland have a mandatory five weeks vacation every year and like I have 10 days vacation every year and no health insurance like not provided through the company and so it's like whenever a company is like we provide health insurance I'm like whatever dude I know, it's just so like, ugh. Or they have this thing where like, if you get hired at a job, um, if you get hired, they can't fire you without like 30 days notice, which is kind of good and kind of bad. Like if I was the employer, I'd be super picky on who I'd pick to work for me if I know that I can't just be like, get out. And I, you know, has its ups and its downs. I'm from Georgia. I'm from Marietta, Atlanta, Georgia, but I don't talk like this because I feel like if you talk like this, then I think that your I, th I think that your IQ just takes a nice little dipperoo into the into the in the yonder over yonder. Sucks. Stop. Um, yeah, I never get dark in the summertime. It's like the sun always sits at the horizon. So when it's like 3 a.m., it looks like 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Or actually, I don't know. Move to Marietta from Miami. I mean, it's nice. It's a cheap place to live, but there's nothing to do. There's no outdoor stuff. It's really humid all the time. In the summertime, it's very, like, hey, stop sniffing my burgers. Um. Yeah, it's, uh, I've just been there, so like, uh, did Mormons pick on me for being a heathen? Uh, they come to my house sometimes. Actually, I don't know if, you know, you guys can't probably see it, but like, if I flip the camera around. If you see that parking lot over there, uh, that's actually a church. So I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of doing that whole strategy where like, they don't realize yet, day five. Yeah, but so the thing is like I want to do paragliding. That's actually why. That's why I have this tattoo of this feather and like flight. I really wanted to be a pilot when I was a kid. So my dream is to do flying stuff. So I moved to Utah because it's the best place to paraglide in the world. I have to flip these burgers. Uh, semi-dangerous. It's a lot safer than learning a helicopter. But if you learn a helicopter and the motor goes out, you're done. At least if you're flying a plane or something, you can glide down. What? Don't let your dreams be memes. <laughs> I know. I actually started doing it. I started doing it when I was working, and then I just didn't like it. It didn't work out. I did it for like a week, and I drove there every morning, and I hiked up the mountain. When you can fly in the morning, and the wind is always well, like ninety percent chance, always the same. Um, it was expensive, and that was during the time of when the, my first PHP job was like, we found someone else that's willing to take your salary and has four years more experience. And so then I didn't have a job, and I was about to, because you get your first week free of like training and testing to see if you like it, and then I didn't have a job, and they were like, all right, so it'll be four grand if you want to continue, and I didn't have a job, so I was like, yeah, sorry. And I just haven't gone back. Number one, because I don't have any vacation. I get 10 days, and I was thinking about using it to, to do the training, but you need like two weeks, like just flat, just two weeks to do it. And then you have to get like different levels of certification. You get your basic one where you can only fly with supervision. And the second one, I really want to like use my, yeah. So that's why, that's why I didn't do it. I mean, I, I've done it, I've actually done it in Georgia and I got the very first license that you get. And I took the test to get the second certification where I could fly alone, but I failed. And then I moved to Finland <laughs> before I could retake it. 
Uh, what brought me to Finland? Oh yeah, I saw that. Uh, how have I never told you that? I've actually done it? Yeah, no, I've done it before. I started doing it. Why am I not doing it right now? Because where I live in Salt Lake City is across the entire valley from where you do it. So if I if I had the gear and I was certified, I have my cert like I remember most of the stuff. Like you got to check the lines, you got to do the stuff with the helmet. And I remember most of the rules and regulations, but yeah, excuses. That's how I feel. How's that little Caesars, Taylor? Um, yeah, that's like my dream. I want to do hang gliding. I want to do like if you if you don't know what I'm talking about, just like. Look up speed flying and then the GoPro will come up. <laughs> yeah, I know Lehigh's actually, it's thir it's 30 minutes away. Well, it's actually, I guess it's like Draper. And so the thing is like, you have to do it every morning. You gotta keep showing up. And I need, so like, I had I had three ideas, three ideas for this, or two. Uh, one is to use all my vacation and just stay in an Airbnb down there. So I wake up and go, wake up and go, wake up and go. And then, yeah, if I really want to do everything, I try harder. <laughs> um, then I had another one, which would be to ask my boss if I could work remote just a few days a week, like Thursday, Friday, every week, and then just go there Wednesday night, stay, and wake up and do that, wake up and do that, and do it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so four days uh, in the morning. And then the fourth is to just work remote all the time and just do that. I gotta flip these again. That's actually, the thing with paragliding is that it's so dependent on weather and sometimes you're just cloud watching, waiting so that like, so what can happen is if you're flying close to cloud base, uh, about 9,000 feet, you'll, you can get sucked up and that's happened to a few paragliders because of the, I don't know, you've seen those big like fluffy, yeah you can fly into clouds, it just depends on the weather and how the clouds look. So there's different types of clouds and those those big fluffy cotton ball clouds that like just curl up for like forever, those are bad. <laughs> you can't fly you can't fly near those because you'll get sucked to 18,000 feet and there's no oxygen, you'll pass out. And then and that's it. It's game over. And that's happened before to a bunch of people, so Yeah, it depends. If you you can stay at an altitude where it won't bother you, then you have a you have a little uh, meter so you can see your height. But that's why you're, it has to so depend on weather. Yeah, education to become rich. Unless you're like a tenured professor. Um, no, there's no OT pack. So there's like the paragliding where you can actually like fly in thermals, like hang gliders and go up and come back down and go up and come back down. You just look where the birds are or you can, uh, it's called a vary, vario. And it beeps if you hit, it beeps if it detects that you're going up. And so then you just kind of have to feel your way into this little circle that you just go up. You can do it with no clouds, clouds. And then there's a speed wing, which is like where you hike up the mountain and you just start running off. And it's almost like a parachute, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit better. It provides more lift so you can kind of, you can't go up, but you can, you know, only go down, but you go a lot faster and more control. And then you have a parachute, which is literally just this, Slow your fall so you don't die. That's why. I, that's why I moved to Utah. That's because, uh, well, that's not why I moved. Plenty of time off. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not super worried about it. I kind of. My my goal right now is to set up my life so that I can do a few things. I, I was having this thought at work like yesterday. Or the day before when I made that perspective video of like, so this is this is my end goal, to set up my life to somehow be like independent, you know, kind of uh, set my own schedule, I guess. So that's option one is to work remote. Op option two is to have my own thing. Um, option three, I don't, I don't have an option three. So just those two, work remote or have my own thing. And then, um, just be able to set set my time so that I can go do that um, because if I do it now with such a busy schedule like like then I'll have it and I'll be able to do it but like that's not the I'll still have to come back home and do the grind and like what's more important to me is kind of getting out of that 
kind of doing something different. I'm not a very traditional person. I've never lived my whole, like, I've never lived my whole life. I have lived my whole life in a very non-traditional way. I've dropped out of college like five times, six times. Tried like five different degrees. I tried mechanical engineering. I tried international business. I tried to be a pilot. It's gonna be 250K in debt after that. Uh, I tried, what else I tried? I tried IT, like I moved, I went to Finland. I dropped out of Finland, went to South Carolina, lived with a friend and then went to college there and then I dropped out because I, yeah. I've done, I live my whole life very, a little bit different. So doing the whole traditional nine to five with kids is just, I don't know. I think these burgers are burnt. But the sriracha burgers should be good to go. thing, yo. Can't see if there's questions. Yeah, no, no questions. You guys just want some of this ASMR grill? Sizzling. I made, I made enough food to feed everyone in this chat and me for like three days. <laughs> that was not my intention. That's what happens when you go to Costco and you freeze an entire bag of it. Uh, off, off, off. Let me turn this gas off. Favorite band? Uh, I don't have a favorite band. I got, I, I, I like a bunch of, bunch of different stuff. Uh, how did I get started? So, all right, let me answer favorite band. Favorite band number one. Uh, I like. I can't answer the band because it's always changing. I'm like, oh, this, this is the best, and then I, you know, listen to that like 15 times. In sync. Is it because of my bomber boy band jacket? Let me. Let's go. Let's go inside real quick so that we can continue this conversation. And I can take these burgers inside. How did I get started? Um, I was sitting, <laughs> I was sitting at my job, a mechanical engineering job, and I just started doing, running some numbers, and I realized that if I stayed here for whatever, first of all, there's no real opportunity here in Utah, and if I ever lose this job, or if they ever lay me off, and they were always talking about like, reevaluating the workforce that was needed, and then I was working 12 hour shifts for four days. And yeah, these burgers look pretty good. Working 12 hour shifts for four days in a row. And I didn't get paid overtime, right? So that'd be four, 48 hours, no overtime. And then I'd have three days off and then I'd work three 12 hour days and get four days off, which sounds like really cool. But like when you're in the middle of that four day, 12 hour, it was terrible. So mechanical engineering, like didn't, there's no real opportunities here. I have a foreign degree. Uh, most places in the U.S. require a domestic degree. Here's the burgers, by the way. Looking pretty, pretty juicy. All right. Um, yeah. So, um, basically, he just ate a pizza, dude. Yeah, basically it was enough to make me realize that if I ever get fired, I will have no other skill to go on. And if I stay here, the skills that I will continue to learn will be so industry niche that I won't be able to transfer anywhere. There's no opportunity for mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering is very... Uh, I, I applied. I know because I applied. And um, basically every one of them turned me down. For IT, like software, oh yeah, dude, all day long. But, like, I was learning all these in-house programs, and so when I were, if I were to go to another company and be like, 
or if I, you know, say I get laid off and I go to another company, I'm like, hey, uh, here's my experience, here's what I've done, be like, we use none of this, this is totally different, you know, and then I've been working for so long and I, my living standards have increased to the amount of money that I've been making and, you know, I'd want, let's say just, I, I, I want like $70,000 and they'd be like, mm, mm-hmm, why would we hire you that spent all this time learning this irrelevant stuff when we can hire some hungry kid from college that was willing to take 45000 and just be a sponge and do whatever we tell him to do and not have any opinions about work or blah, blah, blah. And I kind of just realized that that would happen. Um, and I was like, yeah. And so also, they wouldn't let me work remote one day because I was sick with the flu and you didn't get any, you didn't get any sick days. Um, so you either had to basically get a write-up if you didn't want to use your vacation. Um, or you had to just come in and work in an office by yourself. And all I was doing that day was making PowerPoints, and they told me no, I had to come in anyways. And I was like, this is the dumbest thing, and I don't know why I have to be here if I'm just going to make PowerPoints. Literally, we talk on, like, Messenger all day. And we had shared cubicles, shared open office cubicles. Like, so it's like, I'm sitting here, got my laptop, and there's, like, some dude, like, just sitting, like, this close next to me. Like, it was absolute cancer. Ugh, worst work environment ever. And so I started looking up like jobs that you could work remote and I found software and then I realized like why have I never done software? It makes sense to me. I mean, play computer games, built computers, played like, you know, did all the IT stuff but never actually learned how to code. And I was like, alright, boot camps. Because I heard of those on TV once and I found the Dev Mountain. And then I uh, enrolled and went to that thing. And uh, yeah, and so it's funny. Hey, no, you can't have my burgers. Get off. Yeah, table. Um, what happened was, after I left, they actually laid off 10% of the workforce, and my job was in that 10%. So I would have been ultra screwed. So now I have a skill set that can transfer to any country. And, you know, there's lots of companies that all use the same skill set. I think it's a it's a good job security. Like I, I'm the type of person that like always wants like a fallback. So like yeah, I want to do my own thing, but uh, eight four one zero one is was my old zip code. Even though I want to do my own thing, I still want to have like something in the back, right? So I can always go work for somebody, whatever. Udemy? I was doing Udemy earlier. I was doing Udemy before the stream. I was doing uh, Automate the Boring Stuff with Python, learning how to do... I mean, most of it's, you know, like, these are the methods, and I'm just doing the beginning, but what else? Uh, Code Academy. Code Academy is, like, it's a good push start, but it's not, like, you have the testimonials there, but those are people that went to all the other resources and used those. You don't need to go to Dev Mountain. You don't need to go to any... You don't need to go to any code school. I was just the type of person who knows that I would get demotivated if I couldn't ask somebody. I would get stuck, and I didn't know about Stack Overflow and all that stuff then. And I'd be like, oh, I just can't do it. And then I quit. But that's not, like, that's not how I am anymore. And I just read a bunch of books, and I learned about, like, self-discipline and just doing it. You know, you just set a time, and then you do it. And you just, even if it's the it's a crappy session, Whatever. Um, but yeah, it's enough. So Katie, Katie's Taylor and I's old co-worker, and she's totally self-taught, and she, she's like team lead for a blockchain company, so um, she went to school for like international business or something, and she couldn't get a job, so she learned how to code through Code Academy, Free Code Camp, and now she makes a lot of money, I assume. Um, to get a decent job, you're going to start as a junior. So people that even go to, like, computer science start as a junior. Like, four-year degree, they start as a junior. That's the same as you. The only difference is that you don't get algorithms, you don't get data structures, you don't get compiler knowledge. Probably a lot of DevOps lacking in there. Um, but to do the job at a company, that's fine. More than enough. You just have to have a nice, crispy, clean portfolio. All right, I, I didn't check to see if these were cooked. Hey, looks all right. 
Hey, looks looks alright. Um, I think I think they're alright. They look okay. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so these are pretty greasy. It's gonna be healthy, I guess. Oh, what up, audience? No, you can't have my burgers. I'm gonna grab a drink of water. First job, you need to know version control, you need to know front end technology, and you need to know how to do queries in a database. Uh, that's pretty much it. Just be able to ask questions. So, front end technology, I don't know, it depends on what you want, but like at least like auxiliary skills, you need to know version control 100%. You know what agile is 100%. Kanban boards. Um, In terms of technology, it depends on what job you want, but, uh, hi. <laughs> Dude. I would say HTML, even if you're doing backend, HTML, CSS3, whatever, HTML5. Um, Frontend is a saturated, but it's saturated at the junior level. You just have to be able. So the way you set your part, set apart yourself from the junior level people are, is having the ability to do algorithm type problems. No, stop whining. Go away. Um, eight to twelve, more more realistic. Um, it depends on how much time you have to learn. If you're gonna do it, if you're gonna do it nine to five every day, yeah, you can do it in three to six months. If if you can do it by yourself, just a couple hours here and there, I would say like eight to twelve. Yeah, that could work. It just depends on how fast you make a really nice portfolio, and what technologies you use inside that portfolio. Portfolio. Yeah, you can still do front end. I do front end. Like it's not that bad. Um, my first job was Ruby on Rails, which was everything. Um, you're gonna be doing front end probably. Anyways, if you're talking about like front end, like just HTML and C, like my job that I have right now, like. If you wanted to do just like I feel like if you had my job, it'd be alright, but you'd still have to know C-sharp and databases and like, there's a little bit more than just that, those like three core tech. What kind of items in the port? Uh, alright, so you need, you have to look up the hot technologies, Taylor would probably tell you to look up what's hot, like make a list of what's hot and then read about those. But I would say project number one is a front-end project, just hard-coded, just uh, make it responsive. Project number two would be something connected to a database, like Firebase, or um, maybe a local database that you can send them, like as SQLite or something. Um, number four, or number three, probably some algorithmic type problems. So. Make a make a make a JavaScript game. Make a Ruby on Rails game. Uh, something with like kind of that kind of logic. You want to cover all your bases. You want to have a little bit of back end, a little bit of front end. You want to use version control of each one of those projects. You want to make them responsive, um, and you want to try to use like what's hot, like use a VM or use a use Docker or something. Use you know if you just like look at look at resumes, kind of find what's common. So right now you'll probably see like. React or Vue or uh, Angular 4, I've seen that a lot. And then read about those and just do the very basic, you know, like every every single framework and library has like a getting started. Do the getting started. It's super basic, super easy. And you're like, how, do you, how would you make an application into a company out of this? But just t do it and then put your own twist on it. You're like, I wonder what would happen if I did this, this, and this. Or if I mix this, this, and this. And then suddenly you have like this weird thing. You'll probably get stuck, but whatever. 
just let it let it get cold, let it sit for a while, go back to doing a different project, and then come back and be like, oh yeah, I know what I do. I know what I want to try to make this into. That's what I do at least. I have a bunch of like half finished projects. Hopefully that was informative enough. I'm gonna get a drink of water real quick. Whoops. Water. We got five people. If you want like core technologies, it's like you can just look you can just look on Indeed for a job that you'd be interested in, see what they want, and then make a project with those things. Mm -hmm. I want to make a Python video tomorrow. Something about automation. It would be fun. I want to do an Unreal tournament, or not Unreal tournament, but like Unreal Engine. <laughs> it's freelance dead now. Freelance is not dead. Freelance is just you're competing against people that live in Ukraine that can live like millionaires off five dollars an hour. So it's just difficult to, unless you have like such a senior level skills that you can command, command a price and just demand that you get paid $89 an hour. Like some guy at work is a contractor. He may, he, uh, unreal, like unreal. Um, how difficult is it where you find a web dev job where you can work from home? So that's like the dream. That's my dream and I did it and now I'm partially, um, but I, the job I work at is pretty chill. So I don't really have a reason to look for a, like a full-time one because I don't, like it's chill, so. Um, it's, there's a lot of websites. There's remoteok.io, we work remotely. Indeed, you can search by location and there's home-based, home office. Um, on Stack Overflow, you can go to the, the perks and select remote. There's actually a lot. The hardest part is getting... There are no part-time dev jobs. My first job was a part-time dev job. There's lots of part-time dev jobs out there. That's the, the, okay, so the hardest part about remote is just getting... <laughs> All the remote jobs are like previous experience remote. Like, what? How do you get a remote job? It's like, you know, when, when you, any other job, like entry level position requires three years experience. You're like, well, how do I get the position if I don't have three years experience? And it's just like that circle. Um, so you just have to be like, yep, I worked at home before. I did homework in college. Does that count? Part-time jobs, part-time dev jobs. You can look at part-time dev jobs on Indeed. I see a lot of those. They don't pay very much, but like, I don't know, when I say, maybe maybe what I say doesn't pay very much is a lot to someone else. Um, I would say maybe like $22 an hour or something. I think as a junior, it's harder once you have more experience and you won't, you, so the problem is like when you need to go to someone every two seconds when you're a junior, and maybe not every two seconds, but when you need to go to somebody and be like, yo, can you walk me through this? That doesn't really happen when you're remote. Pushing the limits of getting into the game? No. no I'm, I'm 27. I started at 25. Um, that, I, that, no. no. Easy. I'm getting it easy. It only takes like a year. Less than a year, depends on how much you put into it. 
33, want to want to change careers. Dude, there were some people in my in my, in this boot camp that were like post 40, almost 50. And at that point, you know, just your your brain's just not as elastic, you know, post 50. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just like that's just age. But 33, yeah, easy mode, dude, for sure. I guess there's police happening. Am I getting swatted right now? Rip. Here we go. Katie's like the magic example. She started because she was, I think she was sick and it was preventing her from working and she couldn't find any jobs with her international business degree anyway, so she's like, alright, I'm gonna learn how to code, and she just kept pushing and pushing, and she's... But you can make, yeah, you can make money by trading. There's a lot of freelance WordPress jobs, but they want custom themes. Generally, they want custom themes, so you gotta learn a little PHP to do that. And when I say a little, you gotta learn a lot of PHP. But PHP is pretty simple. Bias, I guess I've been doing it. Um, what happened? Somebody talking. Um, how do you compete with people? So there's a on on Upwork. There's a section where you can just sort by. Crap. Uh, I have to go back to the chat. One moment. On Upwork, there's a section where you can sort by uh, US based only. Um, sometimes you'll have to do it. I said Stack Overflow has remote, I think. Um, you just have to, you'll probably have to do a couple, like just for free to get it going. Just to build up something, be like, oh, I made this for this guy or this company, or, you know, something like that. And then. Just you can you can literally just look up people. So this this comes with the part I tried. I think I I did it on Hangouts with Taylor. I found a bunch of when I when I didn't have a job and I was just trying to make money somehow. I call I looked up all these people that like these businesses around where I lived and I and I, was, I looked at their websites and they were all garbage and I called and I was like hi I want to make your website for free and they hung up <laughs> like it's terrible and I was so I was so hurt like it just is like, I'm not a salesman, right? Or I wasn't a salesman. I've been listening to a lot of sales books, so I, I'd like to get another try. I'd still probably get no, because I have to practice, but um, that's how you can get it for free, even though. So then I so then I called back, right? When I was just offering it to do, do it for free, they were like, oh, no, scammer, lies. So then I called back and I was like, I called back as like, a, as a satisfied customer. I was like, I appreciate all the work you've done on my car, because it's a car place. And it was just, you know, I just can't thank you guys enough. And the, the rate was amazing. And, you know, I really like to make you guys a website since that's what I do. And they were like, yeah, sure. And I was like, okay. I mean, I didn't do it. <laughs> so you gotta get creative. Are you hungry? Hey, are you hungry? We got about 19 burgers in here. And Suvi thinks she can eat all of them. <laughs> That's all I see. I see these like beady little eyes just sitting at the end of the table. <laughs> hey, Sue. She must eat all of them. 100%. I wish, like, how do you... I wish I had a better answer. How do you compete? You just need a portfolio. Your your portfolio says what it says, and you're going to have the people that lowball you, and then you're going to have the people that are reasonable and want someone who can communicate. Actually, so, but... That's what happens. Uh, we have some outsourced developers at my job, and they... I'm not actually... Actually, I'm not afraid to say that they're garbage, so... They're fucking garbage. They just do the minimum and their communication's bad and like... Oh, 
what does what that say? Uh, let's say, obviously you need HTML and CSS. Uh, let's say SAS instead of CSS. No one really uses plain Jane CSS. They use SAS or SCSS or less, like a pre-compiler thing. I would say learn Webpack, learn Babel. Taylor, I swear if you make a comment. Learn uh, Webpack, Babel, um, learn about Node. Like I know Node is back in, but you're gonna run local servers and you're gonna set up environments on Node. So Webpack, Babel, um, these aren't like direct front end, but you're gonna use it in setting up an environment and everywhere you work. Um, yarn, look up Yarn, M NPM, look at uh, NPM and all its packages. Uh, maybe look at Bower, Bower, like a package manager. Uh, those are like pretty big front end things because they can do like hot reloading for you and node is it's different I'm not a pro with it I know enough to set up a server and install packages I don't write code in it Cliff notes on node. Import things that you need. Export that thing that you're gonna use. Um, use node to install packages for your package manager. That's it, that's all I got. Node has a lot of imports and exports. I remember that, watching that. There's a, there's a, there's a Udemy course called the Understanding the Weird Parts of Node by Anthony Alicia, I think. There's a Understanding the Weird Parts of JavaScript so it goes over like all these weird gotchas. And then there, he does one for Node. And he it just like he breaks it down to like the explain like I'm five level on Reddit. It's good. I got halfway through. Just like I do with all my Udemy courses. Too real. Webpack, Babel, Node, NPM, Apollo, GraphQL. Um, you're gonna need some Udemy courses. It depends on the projects that you make in the courses and how relevant they are. So Udemy is kind of infamous for getting outdated. M-O-O-C. I want to say object-oriented something, but you said that in Discord also, and I don't remember. I don't know what that stands for. I said uh, object-oriented something. Udemy courses. Yeah, so the Udemy courses can. Just make sure that you're getting a modern one. Or, if you have a specific job in mind that you want, look, uh, look at current job applications for that and see what they're using, and then match your Udemy courses to it. Massive, like, like Coursera or something like that. I don't think they care. No one cares where you get your education from. They just want to know if you can do the job. That's it. All they, all they, all they care about is can you complete the code test that they give you better than other people. That's it. Yeah, ask. Yeah, Taylor just, Taylor just hired, uh, <laughs> yeah, companies want you to be like code monkeys. But so Taylor, <laughs> Mr. Taylor over here should be doing this AMA. He's a he's the old he's the old CTO. So like he um when he was hiring people, he was like, I don't care where you learn how to code. You learn how to code in like Namibia. Like on a on a etch a sketch for all he cares. He just wants to know if you can complete his code test and answer his questions. That's it. That's all anyone cares. And that you can do your job. And that you're not socially weird. Like, you know, the classic neckbeard developers. At least be able to communicate. It's actually pretty important. <laughs> Alright. 
Taylor, your inbox about to blow up. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, so my last boss, my last boss that Taylor and I had didn't have a degree. He was a military, military, I don't know, he was a veteran. The boss I had before that at the PHP job was a civil engineering degree. He hated it for the same reasons. And then the boss I had before that got a degree in math, and he was the CTO. Taylor has a degree in computer science. The boss I have now, well, she's like design, um, and she has no no degree. The CTO, he went to school in India. I don't, I don't even know. No one cares. Just be able to do your stuff. Just have a good portfolio. You know, show evidence of what you know. And then prove it when they hit you with that, here's a project, complete it in three days, give it back, or here's some questions we have for you. What do you know about this? Because obviously you're gonna learn at the job. You're gonna learn everything that you spend this time learning like on Udemy and stuff. When you're actually on the job, you're gonna learn everything you learned on Udemy and all your project portfolios in like two weeks when you're actually like on the job. And they know that, especially if you're a junior. I'm gonna try out this burger, so excuse me. Uh, I'm a Windows person. Um, I think I think Bash is probably better, but there's a bunch of so the thing with Windows is that there's like a bunch of workarounds. Installing stuff, like setting up Apache. So it's terrible. Um, but Why every developer uses a Mac. I'm over here with Windows everything. Yeah, so I think I think uh, Mac is built on Unix, um, which is a little bit more stable than Windows. And that's just like fact. But Windows is getting better all the time. A three month boot camp or months of self study. Yeah, so months. <laughs> Because you're gonna have all the resources around you, you're gonna you're gonna have that moment where you're like, hey, how would you do this? And then he's gonna come over and be like, yeah, you just do this and this. And you're gonna be like, what? And then you're gonna be doing you're gonna be able to do that all the time. I mean, as long as you're not annoying. I mean, maybe maybe two weeks is a little bit exaggerating. I, I would say, everything you learn at a boot camp, you would learn in like, two, yeah, <laughs> maybe I'm not exaggerating. I'm gonna say two two three weeks. I mean, you, use, you do use a lot of what you're doing, but there's a lot more fluff interjected in an actual company. Like, you have meetings and stuff, and you have, like, one-on-ones, and you have, like, progress reports, and just all this, all this stuff that's not, like, actual coding. You just have a bunch of administration, and that part they don't teach you at boot camp. code reviews, peer reviews. I mean, there's like a little bit of that, but they're just focused on like teaching you how to do stuff. You learn how to solve practical problems. Like they give you practical examples at the boot camp, but you're working on like a real professional product that people are using and if you like delete your database, that's it. So you're a lot more aware of what you're doing, I think. Well, maybe that just depends on the person. But just the like, I, all right, maybe like JavaScript knowledge, cool, but like working knowledge of like how to work inside of a company as a developer, yeah, that's like, it's good that you can solve problems, but you need to not be able to you know, you need to like not delete the database for the company, like, which you should never be able to do. <laughs> I just say that because that Reddit post. Yeah, Taylor has a video on why every, Taylor has a video that went to the moon. I think he's at like 300,000 views. I'm over here, struggle bussing for 100. Imagine if we never worked together, why? I don't know. 
Taylor's helped me on some job job interviews. One uh, like when they get they gave me a time test one time and I didn't know anything. I knew nothing. And I was just like Taylor, what do I do? And he did it. I didn't get the job, obviously. Why would it be bad if we didn't work together? Huh. Yeah, I give you like six different time tests. You're like, do them at work. I'm like, I know, but please. I'm unemployed. <laughs> the dream. It's so chill. Like, it's way, like, when I see people that work at, like, no, nothing against people that do, like, retail or work at, like, fast food, I just wonder if they ever think to themselves there has to be something more than this. When you hear your friend and he makes, like, you know, he's like, oh, I'm making thirteen fifty an hour now. I'm just like, dude, do you realize if you learn how to code, you can charge someone $62 an hour and they'll be like, yo, okay. What? It just seems... I just wonder, like, there has to be, uh, there has to be more. Yeah, that was me. There's gotta, there's gotta be more. Like, if I, at, at engineering job, at my engineering job, I couldn't, there's no way I could do freelance. No way I could create something outside of work. Like, you can't just, you can't just build a bridge. I mean, you could, but then you gotta get it stamped by the city, you gotta get all that stuff done, and if it breaks, they're coming for your ass. They come to sue you, they're taking your house, they're taking, you know, hide your kids, hide your wife type stuff. Like, you can't freelance as an engineer unless you work, have the, you know, the nine years traditional work experience, and you get the, the professional engineering certificate, which you have to take a test for, then you can stamp your name on stuff. You can't stamp your name on a blueprint otherwise. But with, with code, you're just someone's like, hey, I have an idea, and you're like, let me whip that up. If it breaks, people's data gets leaked, I guess. I don't know. Like, nobody dies. I mean, unless it's like controlling an airplane, I guess. Like Python scripts. <laughs> Never mind. Disregard what I say. Yeah, I was just, there's just gotta be. Some people, yeah, maybe Taylor. Some people just don't have that. They just don't got that fire. They just don't wanna improve. Like when I think about like my, like my sister, like and my family. They just don't get it, I guess. Whenever I think of, like, people, like, my sister's friends or something, they're like, they're like, I'm making $8 an hour now, or whatever, and I'm just like, dude. It's not about the money, it's just about, like, there's so much more. I try everything. Um, I try to, so like, I don't want to pick something I really enjoy to do as a job. I try to pick something that I, I try to pick something that gives me like some sort of fulfillment with my job, but it's not something I would, I mean, I would do it for fun, but I wouldn't like do it all day, every day, wake up, oh, I gotta code some more, like, there's more, there's more to life than just programming, because programming, you know, you spend your whole life learning all this stuff, and you still never be, a, like, the best, you probably get paid a lot, but, uh, you know, like, I wanna go outside, see the, the, the fact that I'll never see, like, every nook and cranny of the earth is super 420 thought, but, like, that fact is just, like, and I'm here, like, I have to spend, you know, my life in, this cubicle. Ugh, no. I think programming is nice. It's a nice, it's something that, like, it's something, that's a good problem solving skill. Helps you be okay with feeling like you don't know stuff. Especially in development, like, you just have to, you're constantly going to be like, I don't know how to do that, but I guess I'll learn how to do it. Every day. That's what my boss does to me. I did, that's my PHP job paid 50k. It was fine. Ugh. 
the job itself is kind of strange, though. Hey, dude. What I code for 30k, I can't live on 30k. I don't think. I'd have to do something else. I have to do something that makes a living. And code is not like every day I wake up and like I hate my life. And it pays okay. I think I need to live, I need $3,200 a month to live, roughly. So that would come down to a little over 36,000 a year. That's like, so it'd have to be more than that. It'd have to be like 45. That's like take home. I don't have, I have, uh, I have 14, no, 13, 12, something like that. It's not about the money. I mean, it is about the money, but it's not about the money. Like when you, all right, this is this is the phrase. It's like, when you don't have money, money is everything. But when you do, it's not. And then you just want, then you just realize that you just want enough to live, go see a movie, go out to eat once in a while, but not spend your life taking orders in a cubicle. And that's me. So like, let's say, let's say you get a job, you're making 120k, 130k a year. Like it sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, but it's not life-changing money. It's not enough to pay off your house all of a sudden. It's not enough to pay off your car all of a sudden, probably. So when you start making more money, generally people's living expenses start to increase at the same rate. It's not enough to like, suddenly you can buy like a row of townhouses on, you know. Like, that's why it's just like, I'd rather have more time. If I have enough money to do what I want, which is not very much money, you know, maybe. Except for, like, the occasional large expense. Like a, you know, like a cruise, like a really nice cruise or something. I'd rather have more time than money. As long as I can live and meet my needs. Ideally, I'd like to have money and time. Because I don't really like the whole aspect of like work five days for two days off. It's like a negative sixty percent return. I'm not I'm not a fan. But you just grow up and people tell you that that's what you do. But if you were a little kid, you'd be like, why would I work for three for, for two? It's like someone's like, <laughs> so you're like, you know, I'll give you, you give me ten dollars and I'll give you two dollars back or something. You know, it's not it doesn't make any sense. But that's the world we live in, if you choose to go that route. Getting real deep. This stream is getting real deep. It's too deep. Of actual productivity, yeah, like four hours. Four to six, probably. Uh, maybe, maybe four hours. And then you're just there, talking to people, water cooler talk. This is why, this is why I have the unpopular opinion in terms of like business owners, they don't like it if you're an employee, but I think that businesses should be based around productivity and not hours worked. If you get everything you need to be, get done and for that day, then okay, go you you know, wake up, work work three hours, just boom, 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 knock stuff out left and right, and then just go, that's it, go, go be done. Your brain's gonna be mush. There's no sense in sitting here for the rest of the day if you can even think. But, you know, apparently after study after study shows that hours hours worked or hours present do not equal hours, you know, of productivity. That's what I tell my boss. I tell it like I, I wake up early because that's when I can think real good. Got my creative, 
creative flow going on. But then at right around two o'clock, I'm just like, that's it. I'm out. Doesn't even matter. Doesn't matter if I if I worked really hard. Doesn't matter if I worked really like did nothing. After two o'clock, I'm just like, well, my brain is done for the day. No, after four or five, I don't know. I think I think the old eight to twelve would be good enough. Just let people work till like twelve o'clock, go home. I think people would be more motivated. And it would force people to get stuff done. You only got four hours to do it, so might as well get it done. They do that in Sweden. They have like a six-hour work day in some places. And people are, it's like, it, it improves on like employee morale. Oh yeah, four or five hours. Yeah. People will be way happier. Everybody go up, but you know. There was one company that I applied to that was had a four day work week, and uh, every you get Fridays off. But that company, I wrote about that company. I was like my dream company to work for. Oh yeah, I got this this girlfriend with the possibility to get a French passport and refuses to do so. Um, and then she'd go to school for free in France, in English, but nope. Um, what was I saying? I forgot. Chillin' girl turned into chillin' stare. How do, I, how do I collab with people? How do I collab with, hey, yo, bro, get off the get off the table. Because that's what they're, that's what mom and pops told you to do. Mom and pops said go to college, get a degree, get this degree, it'll be good. Then you get a job and you don't like it, and you just end up existing. Oh. I watch a lot of those motivational videos read a lot of those books, listen to a lot of stuff on like Alan Watts, like you don't want to wake up, you don't want to wake up when you're 40 and be like, no, all right, maybe that's, I mean, that's too close to home for Justin, but you don't want to wake up one day and be like, this is it, I have arrived, this is life, and you're like, what, no, I can't, I can't have that happen. What do you mean hands-on job? You mean like trade jobs? Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't think that... So when I was in Finland, it was like... Yeah, when, I, when, when you're... So the kids in high school can choose to go to upper high school, which is where you learn, like, algebra, blah, 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 blah. Or you can go to trade school or whatever you want. Right at, like, 16 years old and be good. Yeah, trade. Trade's where it's at. I mean... I think software is the only thing with a degree that's still like a trade. You start as a junior, you know, like apprentice, then you move up to mid-level journeyman, then you move up to senior, and then you what, like expert, then you move up to like team lead as master, then you move up to like CTO. That's like the only thing with a degree that's still an apprenticeship based job. But you don't even need a degree to do it. I mean, you need to be able to communicate. So, yeah, 
I just learn learn your algorithms. Learn to learn your data structures a little bit. When I say data structures, I just mean like how to loop through and sort objects and arrays in different manners. Or how uh, things bubble up to the top and like that sort of stuff. Um, if you're a junior dev until you retire, you're doing something wrong. You're going to be forced into not being, you're either going to get fired or you're going to be not, you're going to be mid-level. <laughs> That's it. You're not growing. They're going to notice. They're going to be like, bro, you've been on these baby steps for like 13 years and we really need you to figure out how to, um, you know, code this. You could be a junior dev and work for yourself, I guess. Just never push yourself. Just make static HTML and CSS websites for people forever. I probably, if I if I knew that I could have done this, then I would have just learned how to code myself. Businesses expect, how much do they expect? Um, not much. They know that you're a noob and they're just there to get, and it sounds bad, but they're just there to get cheap labor. That's what they get. So you get to do all the annoying tasks of like, whatever they want, slap on. I slap on like some, a couple of code tasks, but mainly like, we have this Excel sheet with 900 things in our database that we had to use one time. Can you organize it? Like that's what you'll do. That's what I did. And then occasionally they go, oh, we have this little thing. We need, we need to change out some pieces of the page here. Can you do it? Oh, I got my first code job. I don't have any desire to climb the corporate ladder. I rather uh, just skip that entirely and uh, not work in a corporation. I feel like if I made it the CTO, and I was making like two fifty a year. I just get comfortable, but that's not. I need to feel like I'm making my own schedule, making my own hours, and creating. Like, once I start to feel like control has been taken away from me, which it does when I work like the traditional nine to five, and I start to feel like an animal. It's like back in a cage. I'm like, bro, let me set my rules and limits. This is my life, not yours. Don't tell me where to be and when. I mean, I know you're paying me. But if you're gonna be like that, I'm not working for you. I have a problem with authority, I guess. I like I like leadership roles, but it's more I'm more interested in like helping people than just having a role of leader to be a leader. Like I'm not about that power trip. I just feel like there's a lot of other people that have similar thoughts as me, but I've never met them in person, but I feel like they had to be out there, so I just do this, and apparently there are. You know, I go to my parents and be like, I'm the only person that thinks like this, and they'd be like, well, maybe you're the different one. Maybe you're the one that needs to change the way that I was thinking, like when I was a kid. I don't want to go to the, you know, I don't want to do the traditional school stuff. I want to, you know, do this class at home or whatever because I don't need to be there. Just reading books on the computer, like why do I, like. Why up? Are you hungry? Your girlfriend wants to eat. So that is it. I'm outie. Have a good night, everybody. And I'm gonna make a video probably tomorrow. And then another maybe grill and chill on Friday. I'm oh, just a normal. Later, playa. You guys have a good night. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, always happy to help. Hit, hit that Discord. Always there. Gotta plug it, I guess. I don't know, I don't know what else to, like, the, the worst thing that could happen is if you build the Discord and then everyone just, like, if they, like, close the channel or they close the company.
Are you getting ready to come in the kitchen? She's literally like waiting over by the door for you. Okay. All right. See you guys later. The dog. I'm gonna show the dogs. They're gonna be in the stream. There she goes. She runs away. People think that she's a ghost. Say bye. Nah, nothing. What about you? Nothing. Alright, ladies.